What is going on everyone? This video is about how to read a JSON file in Python when a Lambda is triggered by an Amazon event bridge rule. This walkthrough will use the Python library AWS Data Wrangler to read the JSON file into a pandas data frame in our Lambda function. I will show this using an event driven and serverless example of when a user or application uploads a JSON file to an S3 bucket. This bucket has a CloudWatch rule configured so when a file is uploaded to it, it triggers the Lambda to read in that JSON file. So before we write our Lambda function to read in our JSON file, let's review our event bridge rule that I've configured. All right, so I've opened up my Amazon event bridge rule that I've configured to trigger my Lambda function here. And if you scroll down to define pattern, this controls setting up the trigger on your S3 bucket to send a notification to any service downstream that will be notified when an object is created or updated to an S3 bucket here. So under the details parameter, we can see that the name of the S3 bucket is under the name parameter. Now you want to make sure that you've enabled event bridge notifications on your bucket in S3. So let me quickly show you where to find that in the S3 properties tab. So within the event notification section of our S3 properties tab, you have to make sure that Amazon event bridge notifications is turned on. By default, it's turned off on all buckets. Now for this specific notification, I've limited to a specific folder or also known as a prefix in my S3 bucket here. So as you can see here, it has been limited to the raw customer orders table. So anytime a file enters under this specific section in my S3 bucket, I'm gonna get a notification. Now I made a separate video doing a deep dive onto configuring this. So please check out that video if you want more information on configuring Amazon event bridge. All right, so if we scroll down to the last section here under select targets, this is where we've configured our Lambda function. So it is going to send an event to this Lambda function called read JSON customer orders. And you can actually add multiple targets if you wanted to, I believe it's up to five. So a limit of five targets per rule. And that's it. Those are the mandatory parameters that you need to pass in when configuring this Amazon event bridge rule to trigger your Lambda function. All right, so now let's head over to our Lambda function to review the configurations to read in our JSON file in Python. All right, so I'm in my Lambda function that I've configured to my event bridge rule. And you should see that it's connected to our Lambda function. Now, in order to use AWS Data Wrangler, the library doesn't come installed by default. So I've added it as a Lambda layer here. So if we click on our Lambda layer, it's gonna bring us to the bottom. As you can see here, I'm using Python 3.9 for my Lambda function. And you should be able to find it by hitting Add Layer. If you scroll down to AWS Layers, you should see AWS Data Wrangler. Now, I'm not sure if AWS Data Wrangler is made automatic for every single earlier Python version. And if it's not, I've made a separate video on how to bring in AWS Data Wrangler as a Lambda layer to your Lambda function. So check out that video. All right, so the next thing that we need to make sure that is configured correctly is our permissions. So if we scroll down to our configuration and hit our permissions tab, we should see that by default, the Amazon CloudWatch resources are selected, but we should have two actions that we need in order to read the data from Amazon S3. So if we review our functions here, you can see that I've added the get object permission, the put object permission and list bucket option permission. So I've added at the bucket level and everything at the object level here. Now you don't need the put object permission if you're just reading data. If you wanna to write to a different object, then you're gonna need those permissions as well. If you do not have the list bucket permissions, you're gonna get an error message when you attempt to read the file within AWS Data Wrangler. And if we scroll down to our resource-based policy, we should see that Amazon EventBridge has added this custom policy, and this gives Amazon EventBridge permissions to invoke our Lambda function. Great, and if you need to configure the Amazon S3 permissions, this can be taken care of in the IAM service. All right, so now let's move on to looking at the code that we're going to need to read in our JSON file. So we're just going to head back to our code section of our Lambda function and let's go ahead to add in our code. So our first step is we need to import our AWS Data Wrangler library. So I'm going to do import AWS Wrangler as WR. And now the next step is we need to pass in the key and object that we're interested in reading into our Lambda function. So we're going to be trying to extract that from this event parameter here. So this event payload is actually a JSON that we're gonna be reading in. So I'm gonna add a new parameter called bucket and I'm gonna make that equal to event. And it's going to be detail bucket. And the last one is name. 
So this is going to give us the bucket name from our event bridge rule that's coming through. Now, the next step is we want to identify our directory and file name that we want to read into our Lambda function. So I'm going to give it a new parameter called S3 underscore key, and that's going to be equal to event as well. It's going to be detail. And next is going to be object. And next is going to be key. All right. So how did I know to grab this? Well, I've went ahead already before this making this video to just print this statement of what this event is. So let me just show you what we would get if you would print this in the console. I've already added as a test parameter so I can actually invoke this to make sure that my Lambda is going to run successfully. So let's go to check out what I've written here. All right, so this is what the payload looks like when our Lambda is being invoked from an event bridge rule. So we can see here that the name parameter of our bucket is within detail bucket name. So that's where I've got the first variable. And then the second one is our key. So it's this full string over here. And that would be under detail object key. And there's a lot of other interesting information that you might be able to use from here. For example, the time, the service that's being used, what's the detail type. So we got object created, but also reason. So, you know, this is actually a put object um, event. So that means that a new file has been uploaded or overridden in our S3 bucket. All right, so I'm just gonna close that, go back to my code here. All right, before we add in the code to read in our JSON file, it's important to understand how your JSON data is formatted. So let's just review the data that we're working with here. All right, so the file that I'm about to read into my Lambda function here, the orient would be considered record. So we see we have an array and within the array, there is a JSON object, which has this key value pair with each record that we want to read in. So we got the order ID, we have a total amount, we have a customer ID, and then it repeats for every single record of data. So the first file I'm going to show you how to read in is going to be formatted like this. Now, the second file that I'm going to read in after we read this in successfully, it's going to be formatted slightly differently. Sometimes you might see JSON files where you have each record of data is separated on each line of the JSON file. And as you can see here, there's no commas. If you actually ran this through a JSON validator, it's going to say invalid, but technically each line of this file is a valid JSON. So actually what's nice about AWS Data Wrangler can actually handle this type of data. So you don't have to go through and restructure your data in order for this to work. All right, so let's go ahead and read in our first JSON file. All right, so I'm going to create a new variable called DF, which stands for data frame. And this is going to be a pandas data frame that is being read in using the AWS Data Wrangler read JSON method. So we're going to add wr.s3.read underscore JSON. And the first parameter we're going to pass in is called path. And this is going to be the full paths of our file that we're interested in reading in. And one thing I want to point out by doing this, and you know, it's coming from this event parameter this is going to be dynamic. So whatever file you throw into S3, it's going to automatically read that in. And that's all you need to read in our first JSON file. It will automatically detect the orient of our JSON file. But just to show you what the optional parameter would look like, if we wanted to add it, it would be orient is equal to records. Great. Now we can just remove our path statement here. And let's just go ahead and add a print statement to print our data frame if this all worked. And I'm going to test this on the file that I've already brought into S3. So it already exists just to make sure that this works successfully. And let's just give that a run. Now you're going to want to make sure to hit the deploy button before you run the function. The reason I didn't and it's still running is I tested this function written exactly like this already before making this video. Great. So as you can see, after 3.4 seconds, we now have our pandas data frame being printed in our log over here, where we can see that we have our three columns and the values associated with each column. Great. So how do we read in our second JSON file, which was formatted slightly differently, where we had one line for each record in our JSON file? All we're going to have to do is add another optional parameter and it's going to be called lines and we're going to make that equal to true and we're going to make sure we deploy our changes. Now I'm going to make sure that I've selected the JSON file payload that is going to be formatted this way. So if we just look at our second event that I've configured here, it's going to a different file than the one I showed you earlier. Just the file name. The key is actually different. Great. So now if we give that a run, again, we've been able to successfully bring in that data into a pandas data frame. 
Great, so now let's just go back and we're gonna now just test this end to end by actually dropping in a file into our S3 bucket to make sure that our Lambda has run successfully. So I'm gonna set the parameters to read in our first JSON file that I've showed you earlier. Go to deploy your changes. And again, the file will be dropping in here. Looks like this. All right, let's head over to the S3 service to upload our data. All right, so I'm in my S3 bucket and I'm going to the directory that we want to be uploading our data to, which has the trigger configured to. So it's under raw customer orders. And as you can see here, we have three different files ready. So I'm just going to go and upload another file. Go to add a file and we're going to add in the file that I just showed you. And once we hit upload, it's going to trigger our Lambda function to run. All right, so our file has been successfully uploaded. Now if we go to our CloudWatch logs, we just got a new log stream for the Lambda that we ran. And if we click on it, we can see here that our Lambda has been triggered successfully for that file that we've uploaded into S3. All right, so I hope you found this video helpful on how to read in a JSON file in a Lambda function in Python using the AWS Data Wrangler library. Thanks so much for watching, and if you learned something or thought this video will be helpful for others, please hit that like button. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks again and see you next time.